Welcome back to the Emily Show Quick Bits. I am covering the week of September 25th through the 29th, including new updates in the Michael Orr blindsided case, an arrest in the murder of Tupac, and all of the coverage from this last week. And it's, you know, the Quick Bits. So let's get into it. I'm legal analyst Emily D. Baker. This is the Quick Bits, where I break down just the main points of the pop culture and entertainment cases I'm currently covering on YouTube and the Emily Show podcast. Let's get into it. On Tuesday's live stream, I covered my last coverage of the Depp v. Heard sidebars, which included sidebars from closing arguments. And there were more than you would expect and that's the sidebar where we see Ben Chu calling Dr. Spiegel a wackadoodle to the judge at the sidebar while accusing Elaine of lying to the jury. The sidebars have illuminated so much about what was going on in this case and the finer points of what is and is not hearsay, what is and is not appropriate testimony. So that is a longer stream, but then we were able to close that case. There is nothing more that I expect coming out about Depp v. Heard other than additional commentary on the trial. The sidebars are out and done. The judgments are settled. There is no more appeal. The only thing still ongoing is Amber Heard and her insurance companies, which is really mostly the insurance companies versus each other at this point. That is ongoing. It's tangential, but as for Depp v. Heard, I think the case is closed. And then on Thursday, another case closed. The Shabiznes case is done with defendant Taylor Shabiznes being sentenced to life without the possibility of parole for the brutal murder of Shad Therian. I went through the sentencing hearing with the witnesses presented by the defense, arguments made by the attorneys, and we learned that even at the pre sentencing report stage where Taylor Shabiznes would have been interviewed in custody by the um, probation department or by the Wisconsin prison system, whoever they have managing those reports, was interviewing her about whether she felt remorse, which is a sentencing factor the court can consider. And she said, no, she doesn't have remorse and she doesn't regret what she did. I think that probably factored pretty heavily into the court not giving her the opportunity to ever get parole, even though the victim's father asked that that be considered and offered forgiveness in his statement to the court. So that was the sentencing of Taylor Shabiznes. And while this case will probably be appealed, she did confess to law enforcement shortly after the murder occurred. I don't think there's going to be much that happens with that appeal. On the podcast on Wednesday, I covered the Joe Jonas, Sophie Turner divorce and custody proceedings. The court filings indicate that the couple has a prenuptial agreement that will probably just be followed through. And we saw a final filing that indicates the couple has agreed that the children will stay within the districts, the Eastern and Southern districts of New York while they are dealing with child custody. But this is an international child custody battle, whether the children should stay in New York, whether they should go and live in England, if it was ever intended that their familial home or their you know roots be set up in England. And we know that Joe Jonas filed for divorce in Florida. So now we have Florida jurisdiction stuff happening, a filing in New York over custody and international custody. And Sophie Turner's attorneys indicated that they are also filing in England, as well as notifying the State Department, because this is, again, complex jurisdictional issues with custody due to the international nature of this family and the fact that these children are dual citizens. We're going to see, I think, the custody part of this play out in New York more. Sophie Turner's attorneys have asked the courts in Florida to stay any custody proceedings, arguing that the international custody takes precedence in federal court in New York, not in state court in Florida. Then there were a couple news updates in cases I've been covering, and I hope to keep bringing you these quick updates in quick bits before I even get to them on a live stream. First, the Michael Orr conservatorship has formally been terminated. The court sua sponte, meaning on its own motion, 
terminated the conservatorship on Friday, September 29th. The court indicated in that order that all of the other matters in Michael Orr's petition to terminate conservatorship are still outstanding. So there will still be discussion about whether or not there should be an accounting and how that will proceed forward. But the conservatorship is finally terminated. We knew this was going to happen. Everyone agreed that this conservatorship should be terminated, but it has now officially been signed in an order. Also on Friday, September 29th, we saw an indictment and arrest in the murder of Tupac that happened back in 1996. From the responses I've seen of the reel I put up on Instagram and on the Quick Bits YouTube channel, a lot of you have been waiting to see what would happen with this case, are not surprised that Kefi D was arrested for this case, seeing that for the last four years he's been talking about the fact that he and Suge Knight are the only surviving witnesses to what happened the night that Tupac was murdered. And a lot of you remember the killing of Tupac as it impacted you as either a teen or young adult, because, you know, a lot of us are 90s bitches up on this channel. So I will be covering that and the indictment on the podcast this coming week. So stay tuned for that on Wednesday, but there is an arrest and an indictment, which means this will start the process of going towards trial. And with all of that, law nerds, take care. That has been the quick bits and I will see you in the next one. Cheers. For deep dives into the stories that I covered here, you can find them on my YouTube channel at The Emily D. Baker and The Emily Show Podcast. I stream every Tuesday and Thursday. The podcast goes live on Wednesdays. And if you want more Law Nerd community, come join us at lawnerdsunite.com.